This is actually my favorite thing about the Heroes of Olympus Percy Jackson books. Piper and Leo and Jason get to know Percy and Annabeth in the weirdest fucking way. And so like, no, they're not really gonna like be close friends in these books because they didn't really have a chance necessarily to get to know them. And I find that fascinating. <laughs> the first time these kids meet Annabeth, she sees that Jason is not Percy and just starts screaming. Where is he? She starts crying. People with her have to apologize because she just started screaming because Jason is not Percy. That is the first time they ever meet them is that. That is their first impression. And then these kids go to camp. And everyone at camp is, like, nice to them and all that. But also, at the same time, camp is a giant ball of anxiety because the person who just saved them during the war just disappeared overnight. So what does that mean that's going to happen to the rest of them if the most powerful demigod from this camp just disappeared with no warning and nobody can find him? So, yeah, that's... If you go to camp and every single person there is, like you know, nice to you, but also at the same time is so concerned about where Percy is and is like disappointed by the fact that you're there instead of Percy. You're going to be like, who the fuck is Percy Jackson? Why do people care about him so much? When they leave to go on their quest, Annabeth doesn't come with them because she has to go and look for Percy. Any other time, Annabeth would have gone with them to help them on their quest. But she just tells them straight up, like, I can't go because I have to go look for Percy. And it's like, why is Percy so important? They don't know why. And so they just don't get it. I remember, there's a part in The Lost Hero where Jason is looking at photos of Annabeth on the wall. Of her smiling and looking happy. And he acknowledges, like, wow, I wonder the last time Annabeth looked happy was. Because he has never seen her look happy. Because he has met her during the worst fucking time of her entire life. <laughs> so yeah, Leo is going to, like, needle Percy. He's going to ask him questions. And he's not going, he's going to ignore the signs that Percy doesn't want to talk to him because he doesn't know this kid. And he's, like, pushing him too hard until Percy ends up blowing up at him. Because Leo is annoyed by Percy and doesn't understand why everyone cares so much about him. He keeps describing him in those books as being weird because he eats blue food a lot. We as the audience know that Percy eating blue food that much is a gigantic red flag about how much he is, like, just hanging on for anything that he's eating his, like, coping mechanism food on a regular basis. And then you bring on the fact that they willingly, he willingly leaves what they're trying to do in order to go help Annabeth and falls into Tartarus. Everything gets delayed because Percy and Annabeth end up in Tartarus. And to these kids, they care about him, but they also don't really know them yet. And yes, you can extrapolate that they became better friends afterwards, after this was over, and were able to actually get to know each other. But that never happened in the context of the story. This story happens way too fast where they never, at least Piper and Leo and Jason, they don't completely have enough time to really completely understand who Percy and Annabeth really are. Hazel and, and Frank have a better idea of who Percy is from being around him before he n remembered things. But that's what makes these books fucking fascinating. <laughs> is to see what like these kids think about them when they got to know them during the weirdest time they possibly ever could have gotten to know them.